Does God want us to be stupid? Like the, the universe, infinite intelligence. I don't think we are created and have this mind in our critical thinking for us not to use it. I think we are here to exercise ourselves and exercise how we think. And if we don't, I think we're letting ourselves down and the entire universe down. I have an interesting question for y'all because I'm really curious about the people that come here. How many of y'all believe that the government was either responsible or had uh, some kind of knowledge, pre-knowledge of the JFK assassination? Just show me. Just, I'm just curious. All right, so about more than half of y'all. How about you, Bonnie? Yes, no? You don't know? Yeah, nobody knows. This is interesting because if we think about it, he wanted to do a couple of things. He wanted to splinter the intelligence agencies. He wanted to give more power to the United States Treasury and less to the private Federal Reserve Bank that still controls our money. And he wanted to pull us out of war. And one interesting thing happened right after his assassination. Alan Dulles, who created the CIA, was the key person in the Warren Commission. He was the guy who had just got fired by Kennedy to run the Warren Commission. That's interesting that somebody you just fired that's control of the CIA is actually in control of the Warren Commission. It's an interesting fact. Fact, not a theory, that's a fact. This is really interesting that you can go to the United States Archives. The United States Archives, this is not a secret, this is not hidden from the public, this is out for everybody to know. Operation Northwoods. This is so fascinating to me, it's so shocking, it is so in your face, like there's no way that could be possible until you go to the public records and read it for yourself. The top Pentagon chiefs, they approved to give to Kennedy, to give to him, they gave this to Kennedy, that they wanted to terrorize U.S. cities, our cities in America, and they wanted to kill innocent citizens and trick the public into supporting a war against Cuba in the early 1960s. That is a powerful thing to know. It's a powerful thing to know. And they wanted and proposed blowing up U.S. ships and hijacking planes as a false pretext for war. That is directly from the National Archives. That's a scary proposition that that kind of thing can happen in this country and almost nobody knows about it. And why do they not even care that they have it out to the public to see? Because Alan Dulles himself said America doesn't read nor do they pay attention. So what does it matter? And he was right. He was just right. Very few Americans read or pay attention. It's kind of sad. Well, it's extremely sad. It's uncomfortable. It is uncomfortable for us to get information. It's uncomfortable for us to explore ourselves because we don't want to wake up and go, you know what, that fight I had with my friend last night, it was really my fault. I was the ass. And we don't like telling ourselves that we were wrong. Like, we don't like it. I don't like it. I don't like it whenever I discover, like, okay, I handled that situation all wrong. I don't like it. Most people don't like things that they trust, whether it is a government, whether it is a church, whether it is whatever it is, that they associate their egos with because that's how they identify themselves and the world around them. And they go, man, that's really uncomfortable to know that information. I don't want to digest it. I would rather live stupidly. I'd rather just not know. I'd rather forget it. I'd never want to go to the archives and look that up for myself. It's interesting. How many of you believe that we got into Iraq on false pretenses? Anybody? Yeah, you believe that one. All right, so you, Ricky? Yes? No? Yeah? All right, so that's almost everybody. That's big. Well, this is us blowing up 171 Iraqi citizens that had zero to do with anything to harm us. How about Vietnam? Does anybody think we got into Vietnam for no particular reason? <laughs> We got one guy that's pretty enthusiastic about it. Uh, and then we got a young bunch of young people that don't even know enough about history to even answer the question. Well, you know, there's nothing to see here, folks. We're just making money off of war. <laughs> you go, oh, no, no, not war. We're, we're making money off freedom and democracy. That's really hard for people to wrap their heads around that we would have people so evil in this world that 30 years after Vietnam, it became public knowledge that the Gulf of Tonkin was a stage event that pulled us into the Vietnam War. Like public knowledge. You can just go home or you're home already. Just type in Gulf of Tonkin. Type in Robert McNamara's, one of his latest, his uh, last interviews before he died. He was the head of the Defense Department. He admits it. Yeah, it was a lie. A lie. And the CIA, what do they come out and say? Oh yeah, there's no weapons of mass destruction, but who does that profit? Why? 
I mean, do we really do this in our external world? If we allow all this to go on around us and don't even pay attention to it and don't really do anything about it, do we do the same things with ourselves? Like, do we not recognize our own patterns? Do we not recognize how we treat others or how we treat ourselves? It's kind of difficult. It's a difficult proposition. I mean, we had no problem. Well, except for this guy. We, we had uh, no problem for the most part, you know, half the country, killing two million plus Vietnamese citizens, innocent people. And I say we, <laughs> I didn't do anything. Our government did. Imagine what this world, our country would be like just in this issue alone if we didn't spend in Afghanistan, Iraq, and Syria for the past 20 years over $1.6 trillion. How would our country be better? What sort of school systems could we have? What sort of rehabilitation facilities? How great would our roads be? Why is education so expensive? Like why? Why are we doing that? Why are we harming ourselves by and allowing our souls to be rotted out from the inside by being, I would say we're accomplices in crime. We're not doing it, but they're stealing our currency, our currency units, what we give our life for. We get up, go to work. We have to pay our taxes. That's stealing from our soul to do nefarious things against our will. And how many of us talk about it? How, how many? How many people even know about it? All right, so most of y'all raise y'all's hands for every one of those things. So there are a bunch of stuff about the government you don't trust. Bonnie raised her hand a few times. So if we don't trust them about all those things and we know that they're killing in our name, but why would we trust them with our bodies? Why? Like, why would we trust knowing criminals with our bodies? I don't know. I think God, the universe, gave us this for a reason. Like, I'm a, I just believe that. I believe we're here to help each other out. I believe that if Ricky calls me with a flat tire, I'm going to go help Ricky with a flat tire. If Kevin wants to meditate with me in the mornings on one of our long walks and we want to pray and meditate together, I think that's what friends do. So we're in for a little ride. We just got a few more minutes here, guys. We're going full throttle. It's a serious thinking. So for everybody here today and everybody that's watching, just rewind anytime you need to because you might want to take some notes on some stuff to go look up later. And it's pretty obvious that the puppet masters out there want to separate ourselves from ourself. They want us to separate from others and from the infinite. And then the real question becomes why? Why? Why would anybody want us to separate from each other? It's interesting. It's pretty interesting. Now this is crazy. I know you look in disbelief a lot. I keep seeing you. These people trusted, just like almost everybody, trusted their science, trusted their doctors. This is one of many crazy things that have happened. In Tuskegee, Alabama in 1932, until I was born in 1971, our government put up flyers everywhere in Tuskegee and says, we think some of you people have bad blood. That's what the flyers said. You don't have bad blood. You want to come in? Come get tested. We'll give you free meals. We'll give you free physicals. And we'll give you free burial insurance. But what they were doing to thousands of black people we're giving them syphilis. Syphilis. It's public knowledge. That's the Washington Post just even talking about it. It's everywhere. You can go to the National Archives and find everything out you want about it. But this is the kicker. They gave them, they gave them the United States Public Health Service to study how it would affect them without treatment. Without treatment. And that's who we would trust with our bodies? It seems a little absurd, I think. It seems very absurd. And all of this is public information. None of this is secret. How about this crazy guy, Gottlieb? He was like the mad scientist for the CIA. Can you imagine being arrested like a DWI? I know quite a few of you out here could imagine that. But it just, you, uh, and you go to jail for a couple of days. You got in a bar fight or whatever you did. And unbeknownst to you, they start feeding you LSD. And they feed you LSD for a solid year. And you don't know. That's what they did. Like these guys, <laughs> the ones we're supposed to trust with our bodies, with our safety, with our security, with our go USA. And I'm not anti-USA. I love the idea of USA. I love the idea. It is insane. Can you imagine? They had a town in France, our government, along with France, put LSD in the entire water system without telling anybody, just to see what would happen. <laughs> It really backfired on them, though, because it let loose the, the whole 
counterculture. Most nobody knows this one I think is really important for United States citizens to be aware of. That this guy in the 1950s, he spent $240,000, which was a lot of money back then, to buy all of the world's supply of LSD. All of it. So he could study these people without them knowing. Just start giving them LSD. I mean, what a nice day that would be if it's just one day. But then you'd be freaked out, right? Because you don't know what the hell's happening to you. All of a sudden you see the walls melting, the, the trees marrying together, and you're like, what the hell? Oh God, I'm going crazy. Yeah, that's, that's what happened. This guy is pretty amazing. I don't know if y'all have heard of this fellow before. He's Kerry Mullis. He is a wonderful character. He's a acclaimed scientist, a Nobel Prize winner. He is the one that most of y'all have heard of the PCR test. Almost everybody has heard of it now for the past several years. When you go to the quick cares of the hospital and you want to know if you've got the thing or not, you know, and they stick it in your nose and put it in there. Well, that's the guy that invented it. He's a pretty cool guy. He's a surfer, interesting fella. But a couple of months, I mean, he was in great shape, but a couple of months right before the uh, thing happened a few years ago, he just mysteriously died. But I have horrible sound quality on this little thing, so everybody pay attention. There's just like 20 seconds of him explaining what that device is that everybody trusted in this country. The results, the interpretation of it. See, if you, if you, if you can say... If, if, if they wanted, if, if they could find this virus in you at all, and with PCR, if you do it well, you can find almost anything in anybody. It starts making you believe in the sort of Buddhist notion that everything is contained in everything else, right? I mean, because if you can amplify one single molecule up to, a, to something that you can really measure, which PCR can do, then there's just very few molecules that you don't have at least one single one of them in your body okay so that could be thought of as a misuse that's that's an interesting thing that you can find anything in any body anything any virus any bacteria anything everything's in all of us it does go back to the point that we make here a lot is that we're all connected and we can't really understand why and how we're all connected but you can find anything in everybody if you want to find a disease if we want to say bonnie has something gross that nobody wants but she's healthy and she says no I don't regular blood tests don't show it but you can give her a PCR test and you're gonna find that one particular thing that you're looking for no matter what it is no matter what that's an interesting sort of thought process to understand that's what it is and how about brushing your teeth <laughs> I, mean, I, I highly recommend everybody brush their teeth we should definitely do that but do we know how bad fluoride is for us and do we know that our government knows how bad fluoride is for us? And do we know that they've been telling us to brush our teeth with fluoride for a long, long, long time? Why? They've known. There have been countless studies on this. Most dentists don't know. Because why? They go to school, they get told this one thing, and that's what you do. But fluoride's bad. It decreases the density of your bones. Most countries in the world refuse, including our fair country that me and you love so much Italy they refuse to allow fluoride in any drinking water any toothpaste they don't allow it and they don't have any more cavities than we do that's something huh it causes neurological problems it lowers people's IQs I found this interesting because if they know it causes abdominal pain if you drink too much water it could create all sorts of muscle spasms Harvard has done test after test at nauseum that you can go to Harvard's website and pull it up to read them and we still do it like can you imagine like if you're a doctor and you say okay you're a small lady so I don't want to give you too much of this medicine but Ricky's a big guy so I want to give him some more of it but I'm going to put that medicine into the water supply so you just take however much or little of it you want that seems a little weird like like a little weird because some people will want a little more water than others so how are you medicating the whole population based on a whim? Like it seems weird, especially whenever all these credible studies have come out. And so we think we're doing the right thing. I mean, it's so hard to know everything because there's just too much to know. So wouldn't we just ask questions? Doesn't the infinite want us to ask questions about everything? Say, you know, that guy, Kevin, he was crazy today. He just thought all this crazy stuff. Uh, shouldn't we go, okay, but if that is true, then maybe we have some bigger problems that I'm not aware of. Maybe I should go look for myself and discover for myself what is true and what is not true instead of just believing everything that we hear. It seems like that is an appropriate thing to do. 
So these guys have known this for a long time. One thing that they have known is that, and for thousands of years, many of y'all here have known this, the pineal gland has been thought of as the antenna to the soul. It is one of the ways we are able to commune with God. Hindus, Buddhists, all Eastern philosophy uh, have talked about it ad nauseum for ages. It's just like the cell phone. Like this little thing. Just imagine this is your pineal gland. Well, just a few years ago, we couldn't imagine I could sit here and wonder where is all this information coming from, but I'm able to watch a movie on this thing. Like, well, okay, well, where's it all coming from? Where? It's all around us. It's all everywhere. It's the same way with the pineal gland. Many scientists believe this to be true. But fluoride causes it to calcify. Huh, why would anybody want us not to have that? It seems kind of crazy. It lowers our IQs. Harvard's discovered that at, at length. It's an antioxidant gland for our brain, and it helps us communicate better, so we're, we're, we're destroying it, and it weakens our bone system. Wouldn't that be handy if you wanted to control a population, or if you wanted to invade a country, just to keep feeding them that crap for decades? Just an interesting thought. That's why we're here. We're here to think. How about this? This is crazy to me, too. This, right here, this is directly from the CIA's website. I just screenshotted it. It's Operation Mockingbird. We've known about it forever. It is how they openly tell you we create the left and the right. If you're a Democrat, you're a Republican, whatever your natural propensity to go, we are going to feed both sides because we want to keep you divided. If you have a natural inclination to that, we're going to keep feeding you that. If you have it over here, we're going to keep feeding you that because we want y'all to be separated. We do not want y'all to recognize your own humanity and come together and have discussions. We want you to fight. Well, I don't want to fight anybody. I want to love. I want to smile. I want to hug Andrew. I want to hug Ricky. I don't care if Bonnie's a liberal, and I know she is. Who cares? I'm pretty sure there are many things that me and Bonnie would agree on. But if all we do is watch one of us CNN and the other one Fox... And she tells me she's a liberal. And I'm, well, I'm not a hard fox watcher. I'm, I'm never talking to you. That's insanity. Like, that's true insanity. And if you want to know how we are, have been manipulated, this is Sigmund Freud's nephew. He is one of the guys that are responsible for all the marketing in this country. It's fascinating. It's so fascinating that I have to read this to you because this is so powerful. If we understand the mechanisms and motives of the group mind. That would be us, the whole country. It is now possible to control and regiment the masses according to our, their will, without their knowing it in almost every act of their daily life. These people understand how they can manipulate us every single day without us knowing it. Whether in the sphere of politics, business, and our social conduct or our ethical thinking, we are dominated by the relatively small number of persons who understand this mental process. It is they who pull the wires which control the public mind. This was one of the greatest thinkers and evil little dudes ever. And it's, uh, it's fascinating. How about this? You know what? My doctor says I should smoke camels. <laughs> he must be right. I love my doctor. <laughs> I mean, come on. I mean, look at there. For 10 months, they have scientific evidence that Chesterfields are better for you. Duh, my doctor and scientist said Chesterfields are the best. I got to go smoke them. Oh, uh, but then I'm confused because 21,000 physicians say Lucky's are best. Golly, what do I smoke? I should probably buy all of them. I should probably buy all of them. It's kind of freaky, isn't it? Kind of freaky what we'll believe because somebody wears a white coat. And we don't know what and how they were taught. This will shock you. It shocked me whenever I discovered this. Most doctors have practically zero nutritional study. It's one in five American medical colleges. One fifth, 20% only required them to have one class in nutritional studies. One. You would think when you go see your doctor, he knows something about nutrition, about trace minerals, about vitamins, about uh, sitting out in the sun, all the benefits. Uh, no. What they know is big pharma. Oh, you're sick? Bam. Except for some really good ER doctors that can fix a broken leg, your elbows. That's scary. That is a frightening thing to know. I don't think God wants us to be willfully ignorant. I don't think anybody here that's listening to all of these different things and all of y'all, I can see it in your eyes, are going, oh wow, that's kind of crazy. I think, man, I really should pay more attention. I probably should. I should probably pay more attention. How about this? I was so mad when I found this out because I had these all in my teeth. I didn't know I had mercury in my mouth. 
I had no idea, but boy, I sure did trust my dentist. Yep, you need to fill your teeth full of this mercury, kid. <laughs> Let's go. Let's get us some mercury today. It's crazy. It was really crazy is the EPA and CDC says, no worries, it's okay. Like, oh no, it's fine. But the FDA says it's crazy dangerous. It's okay, you get all these conflicting messages from your people you're supposed to trust. And you're like, wow, I think I'm just gonna go ahead and say uh, mercury is a known element that will cause you to have neurological disorders. Like, I think I can just look that up on my own. I don't need the CDC to say, well, it's not too bad. You know, don't worry about it. It's bad for most people, but you know, probably not for you. I mean, look, you look healthy. I mean, it's only a problem for women or nursing moms or kids under six. That's great. That's great. It's insane. And over the past few years, there was a time when we were told to stay inside. We know for a fact from countless studies, the sun helps melatonin get released in your system so you have better sleep at night. We know that it creates stronger bones, it gives you vitamin K, vitamin D, it helps boost your immune system. We know all these things. So why would we instantly put on our dumbass goggles and go, oh, they told us to stay inside. I mean, that's crazy. That, that's crazy. Many studies have shown us how important gathering together is. Like we know, we need to hug. We need it, we need to hug, it's very important. But you know, we're told not to. Fear is a big, big seller, and we know it. And I do not think the infinite intelligence wants us to be fear mongers. How about this? How many people know that there were 75 books of the Bible that were just left out? Just left out. You know, the Bible was written about 300 years after Jesus, and uh, 75 of them. Here, and I brought, I brought them with me today just to show you. These two separate books, separate books of the Bible. Why? Why don't our preachers and pastors and people tell us what's in them? Because they conflict with the narrative. They conflict with... It's harder to control people when you have conflicting stuff in your own Bible. Council of Nicaea. Just go look it up. How about these guys? Nobody would want us to... Uh, they wouldn't want to control us, would they? No way. No way. No way that would be true. I don't think any of us need a middleman to reach God. I don't think I need Krishna. I don't think I need Buddha. I don't think I need Mithra. I don't think I need Jesus. Anybody can have any one of those things. And if that's your pathway to spiritual enlightenment, fantastic. I applaud you. I think it's good. But I don't believe anybody needs anything to go sit outside and to pray and meditate. All you need is yourself and that divine connection. There is no preacher, pastor, guru, anybody else that is going to lead you in that direction. They can give you great advice and give you great help on different things, and those are all wonderful things. But you are your own guru. We are an extension of the universe, and I think it's important that we use our discernment and our critical thinking to examine things for ourselves. It's vital to our growth. It's vital to how we're going to live in the future, especially with digital currencies coming. Uh, all these crazy things are going to totally stifle our freedoms. It's vital for us to understand things. So I just suggest that we all love each other. We communicate. We learn how to talk to each other better. We learn how to look things up for ourselves. To be honest. To know that it's uncomfortable learning stuff that we thought was so true. That may not be true. We need to elevate ourselves and become higher versions of ourselves. And if any of that resonates with all of y'all, I appreciate y'all listening. And if you're in the local area, we're here every Sunday at 115. See you next time.